This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. The story of two Moldovan women not being allowed into the Bahamas has made international news as Miami-based real estate developer Al Nubi Sears told the New York Post last week that his extravagant proposal plan was ruined when a female immigration officer at the Lyndon Pinling International Airport assumed his 25-year-old girlfriend, Darina Pinzaru, and her sister were sex workers. Mr. Sears says he had intended to pop the big question during a planned nine-day voyage on his 74 yacht starting on Valentine's Day. But as the two women were clearing immigration, Sears claimed that immigration officers said to them, quote, yeah, I know your culture. I know why you're here, end quote. Reportedly, they were detained for hours as their luggage, laptops, and phones were seized and searched. Their fingerprints were also taken. The sisters claimed they had all the necessary documents and requirements for entry, but instead were hit with prejudice and threats of jail. Minister of Labor and Immigration Keith Bell before the weekly cabinet meeting confirming this story, telling reporters he spoke with the Director of Immigration about this incident. I saw the reports. I have spoken with the Director of Immigration, and I am satisfied uh, for reasons which I am not able to disclose that the proper action was taken not to land those persons in this country. In the meantime, Mr. Sears has filed a complaint with the Bahamas Embassy in London on behalf of his girlfriend and her sister, but says he has gotten no response just yet. He says all they want is an apology from the government of the Bahamas. Tourists visiting the Bahamas, particularly as they shop in the downtown area, are being defrauded by some businesses on Bay Street. There have been complaints about alleged defrauding, according to Consumer Protection Commissioner, Senior Supervisor for Education, Research and Training, LeVard Darling. Mr. Darling says tourists who use their credit card for simple purchases of souvenirs are finding themselves being charged thousands of dollars. But there are certain stores on Bay Street that are targeting our tourists, particularly our cruise ship passengers, right? They would purchase an item for X amount of dollars, then they, they give you some free items. And when these tourists get back to their home, they find that their credit card has been charged 10000 15000 for an item that really should have cost only what they agreed to purchase. Mr. Darling says this is an ongoing problem that has caused major concern for the commission. He says tourism officials have been alerted and are working with the commission to resolve the issues. He says it is not an isolated case. Bear in mind that I always, I always say, right, that if you get one complaint um, again from a tourist, you can safely multiply that a factor of 10 or 15 or 20 because not everybody's going to come to you and complain. Bear in mind that these are um, tourists who basically cruise ship passengers only on, in Nassau for sometimes hours, right? And then they're off. And then when they get back to their home country, then they check their statements. They're like, wow, right? You know, um, I didn't purchase all of this, right? And it's unfortunate, right? And it's something that we definitely need to address. We cannot ignore it because it's impacting our number one industry, right? We work hard to get tourists to our country, right? You know, we're going for $7 million. Right? And so we don't want negative things impacting them and their shopping experience particularly right, on our main shopping street, which is Bay Street. Despite leading by as much as 10 points, the University of the Bahamas Mingos men's basketball team could not hold off the Cara Construction Shockers in Game 2 of their best of three first round playoff series at the AF Alley Gymnasium on Saturday night. They were eliminated from the NPBA playoffs. The Mingos fell to the Shockers 74-69. Theodore Grant led the Mingos with 18 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds in that loss. Eriquante Edgecombe added 15 points in the loss. The Mingos lost the first game of the series last Wednesday, 72 to 68. That was in overtime. The Shockers are in game in the game on Saturday. They were led by Spurgeon Johnson and Dario McKenzie. Coaches at UB now currently scouting for new players for the men's basketball team. Meanwhile, the New Providence Basketball Association playoffs they continue this week as they look to crown a champion in time for the national round robin championships. And finally, the Long Islanders Association. They're gearing up for their 54th Long Island regatta set for May 31st to June 3rd in Salt Pond, Long Island. This past weekend, though, they held one of their major fundraisers for the annual regatta when they hosted the Captain Switch Up Mini Regatta at Montague Bay Beach and Park. That was Saturday and Sunday, featuring C-Class and E-Class sloops. After the three-race series pictured here in the C-Class, Whisper was the top sloop and took first place, followed by Sweet Island Gal second and Co 
Cobra II was third. As for the best captain in the C-Class, that award went to Long Island's Stephen Knowles, followed by Dwayne Higgins second and David Rule third. Also pictured here, the top three in the E-Class saw a Baintown woman, skippered by Kevin Moxie Jr., take the top position. Captain Pegg, skippered by Joshua Green, Green was second, and COVID-19 still hanging around here. She was third. She was skippered by Douglas Saunders at the tiller. Next up for the Long Islanders will be the Regatta Fever boat crew set for Saturday, May 13th on board the Black Beard's Revenge. That'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jarino Saunders. Thanks for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.